much. Good afternoon. September 1 ng ngayon. Araw ko dito sa Marichan. Kayo ba ay nakakalimig na ng Christmas songs? Yes. Not only me and I went to Mass last Friday in Don Bosco. And the police reminded us to expect Christmas songs starting today. But it's not the start of the Christmas season at the point. Para sa akin, ang araw na ito ay isa ng Christmas marketing season. Binibilo ko ang ating mga isipan to prepare us for to buy Christmas gifts, no? To be materialistic. By the way, kaya nang nag-uumpis ang Christmas season? Sige nga, Tetes. Presentation. Kaya nang nag-uumpis ang Christmas season? December 16. December 16. Dito sa mga boys. Kaya nang nag-uumpis ang Christmas season? Every day. Every day. Every day. Yung season in the church calendar. It starts on December 25. Amen. And it ends when? It ends? It ends on the Feast of the Baptism of our Lord, which is the Sunday after the Feast of the Epiphany. So January 1 is the Feast of our Lady, and then January 6 or the Padding Sunday is Epiphany, and then the Padding Sunday is the Feast of the Baptism. That is the end of the Christmas season. Anong season ang sinesalibrate before Christmas? Before December 25th? At Magdalene. Okay, so that is the first season. And the first Sunday of Advent starts when? December 24th. It starts on the Sunday after Christ the King, which is the end of Christ the King. It's the 35th Sunday. So, 35th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Okay? So, yan. Ang ating topic today is pagpapakumbaba. But this, just to put this in context, yung ating Cox speech this this month, September, yung ating theme ay tungkol sa kindness. So, that's the, that's the context. How do we teach our kids the virtue of kindness and we broke that into three topics today is about humility next Sunday is about uh, respect and then on the third Sunday it will be about charity okay so let's start with our talk today humility um, kilala mo natin sa St. Thomas Aquinas he said that it means looking at ourselves as we really are honestly and without excuses okay and the same thing is of Avila defines humility as walking in the truth pride means walking in falsehood and I will explain later why pride is kumbaga lumalabas ang pride kapag ka pinag-uusapan ang pagpapagbaba. Why is it important to, for our kids to acquire the virtue of humility? Why is it important? It is important because we want our children and us also to go to heaven. And it would be very difficult for a person if he does not acquire the virtue of humility that person instead acquires the opposite, which is the vice of pride. Why is it important? Uh, why is the humility important? Because if you want to go to heaven, you've got to have faith. If you don't have humility, you cannot have faith because faith is the humility of the mind, which renounces its own judgment and surrenders to the verdict and authority of the church. At marami hong mga unfortunately kaibigan natin dyan, they do not accept the authority of the church. Okay? They give their own personal interpretation of uh, the Bible and a lot of things. No? Um, they think that they know better than the church. 
if you want to go to heaven, we have to be chaste. And chastity is the humility of the flesh, which is which subjects itself to the spirit. And if you want to go to heaven, you've got to be obedient. Liuba. Obedient to the teachings of the church, obedient to authorities, because obedience is the humility of the will, which subjects itself to the will of another for God's sake. Okay? So, the church says, go to Mass on Sundays. And we have friends who would say, why should I go to Mass on Sundays? I can go to, I can pray anytime. Or go to confession uh, to the priest. Why should I go to confession to a priest? I can go direct. Okay. So that person who is not humble, who has a lot of pride, will not be able to acquire the virtue of obedience. So, pua paso ko ang pride which is a vice kapag ka pinag-uusapan ng pagpapakumbaba because pride we know is the enemy of humility Yehuba so let's talk about humility and pride in the context of this young generation kasama ko si, si brother Jun ho dyan sa young generation na yan kasi si Brother Jun ay nagbibigilan na kanyang edad at kumito sa 40 na yung pagbabana. So if you're you're now at 20 plus years old. No? And today's young generation is unfortunately self-centered. It's what you call the me, me, me generation. It's all about me. It's all about myself. What is the manifestation or what are the manifestations? They are the selfie generation. In one talk I watched on YouTube, the speaker quoted a study uh, done a few years back about selfies. Sino who marunong mag-selfie rito? Ako kayo mahiya. Ako kayo Selfie! Hindi ho ba? And, and that study showed that the average millennial will take 25,000 pictures of their face before they die. Okay. So that is the context. So it's all about me. Um, sino ang may Facebook account sa inyo? Wala akong problema kung meron account sa Facebook. At pwede, pwede mo natin gamitan para ang postlet, right? That CPAP is also doing that. How about Instagram, Instagram, IG? Okay? Ang sabi ko ng mga kabataan, para alam niyo, ang Facebook ay para sa mga matatanda. Apo. Totoo po yan. Ang Instagram or IG ay para sa kabataan. Okay? The young ones now, they don't, they post less on Facebook. They post a lot of photos. So kung sa Facebook ay pwede kang post at may hindi ko post sa Facebook ang mga text, di ba? Good morning, I'm here, ganyan, ganyan. Sa IG or Instagram, it's all photos. At doon mo nakikita ang mga selfies. And all of these selfies and so on leads to one personality disorder which is called narcissism. Kilala ko si Nar Narcissus. Yes. If you're familiar with the Greek mythology, the, the character called Narcissus, when he saw his reflection in the pool of water, he fell in love with himself. Doon ko nanggaling ang personality disorder ng narcissism, which is an excessive interest or admiration of oneself. And once, physical appearance. So, ang tendency ng kapataan, kapag uh, nag-post at walang nagla-like, nade-depress. <laughs> Opo. So, pag unang post, hindi yan nakakatulog at nag-aantay ng likes. At pagkakaunti ang likes, ay, nako, malaking, ano, 
kawalan sa buhay niya. Um, unfortunately, yung me, 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 self is all about me, leads to one unfortunate consequence. When kids make decisions, they base decisions on what they feel. So it's no longer the litmus test, it's no longer ano bang turo ng simbahan about this? Ano ang turo ng simbahan tungkol sa abortion? Okay? If I feel that, you know, I'm biologically lalaki, pero ang feeling ko ay babae, hayaan nyo na ako because that's, that's, that's my choice. And the decision is not based on morality or teachings of the church. It's based on what the person feels. I know the answer based on what I feel. And so, it will set generation results in me first. Mauna ako. Self-publicity, I will publicize that I am handsome, I am I'm this and that, I am successful, uh, we are a happy family, but only in the pictures. <laughs> we adore and live for ourselves, and therefore the world revolves around us. Because when I post on IG, when I post on Facebook, the world is looking at us. Kung baga sa theater, ang spotlight ay naka, nakatutok dun sa, sa akin. And that is the atmosphere, that is the environment. And also, this results in one unfortunate thing, which is apathy. <coughs> Ang apathy is indifference, uh, lack of interest or concern on other people. Okay, bahala ka sa buhay mo. But here, I want to, I want to see people like my post. Okay. Anyare, bakit nagkaganon? Ano? Bakit ho, um, ganun ang mindset na ating kabataan ngayon? And unfortunately, we belong, we are part of it because we have kids that belong to that kind of environment. One reason is kids nowadays share less, share less since childhood. Bakit po? Because of uh, some some government policies or some cultures that are brought in the Philippines to have only one child or to, to only have a small family. I grew up with uh, were seven in the family plus our parents. The side who didn't know me, I sila. Okay? Sa side niya, uh, yung apo ng aking biyanan ay more than 20, but you uh, see. Kasi sa amin, amin pa lang, lima na. At sa kambal ni, ni Ate Noemi, anin. So between the two kambals, labi isa na. <laughs> so gone are the joint families. Large families with several siblings. People meet in communities. We don't even have a park here. Okay, in the past we go to the park in front of the simbahan and kids play around and they share new but now what is the policy now? Social networks. We don't see eye to eye. And the world is so competitive. So why should I share my resources? I have to guard my resources. Okay? I have uh, I have money, but I'm not gonna share my money because who knows next month or in the next few months, kailangan ko yung pera. Okay? So there's less sharing of resources. In the province or even in Metro Manila in the past, if you don't have money, just go to kapitbahay at ang magkakamag-anak ay magkakalitin at share resources. 
And this one, when I did my readings, this struck me. You ba? Toys now are expensive. They are badly, many of them are badly operated. And so, sharing toys is not common nowadays. Kasi pag nasira, there's going to be a financial impact. Noong kapataan ni Brother June, ano ang toys na ginagamit ninyo? Mga karton. Mga karton. Oo, kahon ng kolgate. Ano pa kong toys? Yung barel na... Yung barel na... And it's easy to share kasi, you know, it's not expensive. Di ko ba? And then, we don't like watching the same channels. So we have different TV sets and gadgets. And I don't know, there's no study yet on how many television sets does a uh, regular household have nowadays. Maybe it's useless to make that study because in televisions are even medyo passe na. At ang ginagamit ay ito, iPad and gadgets. Okay? So, the environment is kanya-kanya, and it's all about me. And the parents have less time to communicate with their kids. The world, the world is so competitive that even the parents who are working will have to work longer, longer hours because clients also expect immediate response. No? Uh, maybe 30 years ago, a client sends an email. Yeah, 30 years ago, meron na ba? Or maybe 20 years ago. And the response is not immediate and the client understands. Pero ngayon, magpapadala, magpapadala ng email ng kliyente in the morning, they expect you to respond in, in the middle of the day in a few minutes or a few hours because clients know that they see you bring a smart smartphone and you'll be able to check the email you know, and respond right away. We are responsible for making them what they are. Okay? So, um, in fact, before I go to, to the tips, I'd like also to mention about vocations in the priesthood. Di ba? Um, we have a young priest who was recently ordained, and he is the last of the priest from Paranaque. What's his name? Oliver. Uh, Father Oliver. Father Oliver. Father Oliver. And no one from Paranaque is in the seminary. So, why? Because of the context of the things that we have talked about. Okay, so let's now move on to six ways to teach humility. First, teach them to accept the humiliating events of life. Because humiliating events are inevitable. In the office, sisigawang ka ng boss mo, ibabato sa'yo yung pangit na output, di ho ba? Sa law school, kami ho'y tinitrain na makahiya. Sabagkat pag nasa harap ka na ng huwes, ng musgado, ay kadalasan pakahiyain ka, especially if you're a young lawyer. So, when you see your kids do something, and they takes time for them to do, for example, cooking or baking, at medyo natatagalan, don't interfere, okay? Just because you want things to be done uh, quickly, di ho ba? Let them commit mistakes. If the cake turns out to be too soft or too whatever, let them commit mistakes and learn from those mistakes. And there are many things uh, that, that 
all of us can learn from this. A lot of examples, wala wala po tayo yung luxury of time to discuss each one. It's like when your child comes home from school and gets a failing grade, okay? How do you deal with with that situation? Once, um, meron hong nagtanong sa akin uh, after discussing all of this and he said, why is there no subject on how to how to fail? <laughs> or, because in, 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 in the university or even in, in high school or grade school, kids are taught to pass all subjects. Okay, and that's the context, that's the environment. We have uh, some, we know some people who have um, mental health problems, severe depression, we trace um, the childhood, and lo and behold, it's about this. Hindi ho dumaan sa hirap ng buhay. Magdadala ng bibigat na gamit, pagdating sa school, binabayaran ang kaklase ng 80 pesos para dalhin yung bakipak. And now he's suffering from severe depression. Because when you now enter the workforce, he realized, I need to make money. But he also realized that there are a lot of things that he needs to do. And they are very difficult for him. Hindi ko siya nasanay hirap si buhay. Depression ang kanyang in-experience ngayon. Secondly, teach them to serve the homeless, the poor, their family. Teach one another okay, to be selfless. Try to encourage as a family to organize outreach. I mean, you don't have to wait for it. It's good to join parish uh, initiated uh, outreach. No? But in your families, you can organize one. Uh, once we organize in our family a visit to an orphanage, madali hong gawin eh. I mean, you just decide on the day, you call the orphanage, and there's one in along Suka. And it's easy to do. Half, half a day. And the kids are able to see orphans in real life without parents. And they're there, no? Uh, a factory, eh? Nobody's taken I mean, No parents are there. Iba, eh? So, when, iba ang experience ng, ng mga, ma, kapag nakita nila, they see, they become uh, humble uh, because they see the value of the family. It will foster the spirit of service. Along West Service Road, there is also a, uh, a quality of let's of St. Joseph, uh, the school of my daughter organized an outreach also for, for the poor there. Number three, expose them to great teachers and their stories. At wag na tayong lumayo yung gospel na akong today for those who have attended mass already it's about humility and it's about what Jesus uh, said no? in that gospel you can also discuss parables for example today the topic is about humility when you go home okay, in the dining table siguro mamayang gabi over dinner, you just pose one question to your kids. What can you say about the gospel today? It's all about humility. You can also ask them, what concrete thing can you do to help the poor or something like that? So your conversation, uh, sorry, your dinner time or lunch time is converted into a learning experience. And yet, it bonds the family. So, it would be good to turn off the TV if there is a television around the dining table. Okay? Better yet, if your television set interferes 
in, in a conversation with the family bonding, take out that TV and put it somewhere else. Because television, uh, meal time is supposed to be family bonding time. And when you turn on the television during meal times, in effect, kayo ho ay nagpapapasok ng strangers at makikisaro po sa conversation ninyo. Hindi mo ba? Okay. Especially stories about our lady. Okay? Um, especially the Asians. No? There's a portion there that really shows the humility of our lady. Diba? Behold the handmaid of the Lord and what was the response for our lady? Let it be done according to your word. So, imitating Mary's humility helps us to conquer our pride. When she said, let it be done according to their word, did she post on Facebook, I mean, during her time, that, uh, ang lakas ko, si Angel Gabriel, pinudala sa akin and so she, she announced hey guys wow big time I will be carrying the Messiah no she just kept that to herself and it's a sign of humility and we can learn from that she referred herself as God's lowly servant and also the humility for lady encourages us to Sir, our neighbor. What passage in the gospel uh, can you connect that to, to our lady? When she visited her cousin Elizabeth. Uh, if you've been to, to the Holy Land, napakalayo ho nung bahay nila sa Nazareth to the place of uh, Elizabeth. It's very far. And yet she went. And then Mother Teresa and then other other saints, no? Can you think of other saints with uh, stories of uh, humility? Okay, Francis. Okay. The father of Pope John Paul II. Diba ano yung story ni Pope John Paul II? It was his father who influenced his vocation. Because many times at night when he wakes up, he would see his father in the town. And his father was what? What was the book, the profession of the father of Pope John? Soldier. Soldier. And how can a soldier feel that his father not encourage him to uh, pursue the priestly vocation? Number four, make sure they understand where their value comes from. And their value did not count, does not come from the wealth of the father. It does not come from the talents. But the value of our kids really come from the fact that they are our children and they are God's children. And then this um, is from picked up from Pope Francis to teach them how to respond, give thanks, and to apologize. To say please, to say thank you, to say I'm sorry. And Sabi ni Saint Francis, they are simple words, much easier to say than to put into practice, but they contain great strength. The strength of protecting the home, even though even through a thousand difficulties and trials. Instead, when they are lacking, cracks gradually open up that can even lead to its collapse. And you can also add other words. For example, Oppo, the beautiful Filipino tradition. No? Oppo, Panupo, etc. And then finally, let's teach our kids to pray. Mention about Pope John Paul, and the best way to teach uh, our kids to pray is to let them see us pray. pray. Especially, and I always say this, 
I'm biased for that fathers. No? Kneel down and let your children see you pray. Because it would be easier for our kids to relate to God if they can relate to you. They see you pray and kneel down. Let me just cite this uh, post this. Sabi dito, Prayer is the humility of the man who acknowledges his profound wretchedness. That, you know, I'm, I'm just a creature, you are. And yet recognizes the greatness of God. So it's easier for our kids to acquire the virtue of humility if they see us kneel down and pray. And to end this short talk, let me just quote this. I picked this up from, from the piece. Um, and if you look at the, the talk today about humility, at the end of the day, it's just basically self-giving. Selfless giving. And he said, the humble person does not like showing off. He knows that his purpose in life is not to shine and be highly regarded, but to carry out a mission for God and for others. Thank you very much.